arrived. That means Heather's here. I'm here. All electric. Drove right over here in her all electric I car. I know. Did you see I that? I thought that's a, that's a yeah. fancy schmancy, nice looking car. It got me here. It did. Now, <laughs> now you got to get back. back. How's, how did it ride? Good? Good. Good. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's super quiet. Yeah, so when you start the, it, you're kind of like, well, is it yeah, is it on or not? Is it on or not? <laughs> but I mean, it feels like a normal car. Except it's quiet. Except it's quiet. Yeah, we don't hear as much. Yeah. Yeah, it's actually really quiet because the radio's not working right now, so it's like oh, super quiet. Ooh, I can't scary even listen quiet. to you yeah. on the way over. Oh my gosh, why is the radio not working? I don't know. I'm not a. Didn't they fuse out of it or something? I don't know. That Maybe kind of crazy. Something's wiggled loose i'm not sure oh okay no radio though no radio all right well that's all right we'll let you off the hook this time okay you could listen on your phone on you know, I've stream never done that before stream it over my phone <laughs> yeah there's not real great service on the i know that, looking and, to and, say I, I know there's not real great but service. yeah i hadn't thought about that you could hmm. but that's okay no Hopefully problem when we are streaming right now as a matter of fact so okay Oh, very good. Anyhow, well, first off, Happy New Year. Absolutely, 2021. And, and, right. Did uh, the kids have a good Christmas? They did. Very good. Yep. Santa Claus was good to them. Mm-hmm. Even with Mama good to them. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And then, of course, you guys have a lot of travels. You got a lot of family over yeah. there. So, yeah. with everything, everybody's safe, everybody healthy? Yep. Everybody good. healthy. Everybody's been on, not, that's not wood, but no, on that there you go. Gun. That's real wood. Yeah. So. Um, no, everybody's everybody's been healthy and good, good and um school's been a little weird of course i think it's that way for everybody but yeah we've adjusted so ready to tackle a new year let's just see what 2021 has to store right well first off obviously that we kind of touched on this a little bit last meeting but the youth essay is right around the corner it's yes. going to be in february and you guys will be I don't know how you're going to do it this year, visiting schools or not visiting schools or Zooming it or however you're going to do it, but uh, you're going to tell us all about how you're going to get this accomplished, aren't you? Yes, so well, I'm going to try. <laughs> In a nutshell, we're winging it, but <laughs> that's kind well, of been all of 2020, right? Yeah. Um, you know, when we put the Royal Missouri together for the January edition, which our members hopefully have already had a chance to look at, we didn't know yet at the time, would there even be a trip? Would NRECA, our national organization, would they still hold the one in D.C.? And since since the publication of this, they have came out and decided that they are not going to do the D.C. trip mm-hmm. in June. And um, our statewide organization is trying to look at some options, smaller groups, maybe something just in Jeff City so that there's still some sort of incentive. But our board is um, totally okay with doing the scholarships like they did last year. If you remember last year, COVID was sort of fresh, new. We had the contest underway. Right. And uh, we had finalists and then there were no trips all of a sudden. So we were able to award scholarships, a $2,000 scholarship to the top student from each school and a $500 scholarship to the runners up. Those students this year are seniors, so they haven't had a chance to use that yet, but next year they will. And uh, hopefully that kind of gave them a little boost going into their senior year and they've got that kind of sitting in their back pocket and, and know that it's there. And our board has already said, hey, that's still an option, and we do want to make sure, sure. That, that those students are recognized and rewarded for their work. Nothing to sneeze at a $2,000 scholarship. No, absolutely <laughs> not. And we actually we had a parent call in and ask this year if, if we were still going to be doing the contest, and her children were homeschooled. She's a homeschool parent. And we've talked about this before, but I think mm-hmm. we miss it a lot, um, maybe don't mention it as often as we should. Homeschool students are eligible to participate. They just need to turn their essay into the school district that they would attend if they were attending a public school. But it's very difficult for homeschool students to get a scholarship. Um, You know, Mm -hmm. there's just not as many opportunities for them, I suppose, as, as a student in a public school district. And so this mother was really excited that, not that she didn't want her child to have the trip and the experience, but the scholarship in itself was a huge sure. opportunity. Well, school's not cheap. It is not. <laughs> yeah, school's not cheap, especially when they get to the 
college level, university level. Junior college with the A-plus program does help a lot. Right. Uh, we can get a lot of those core courses out of the way, and, mm-hmm. and you don't have to spend additional money. But, you know, anymore, Heather, with a lot of the high schools having college level courses, this is, you know, never offered when I was in school. Or right. Heck, I had not had to spend much time in college at all. But I know. My daughter's a freshman, and yeah. this sem- last semester she was able to take a college course. She's got half a credit. No. Freshman. As a freshman, it's a computer court, computer course, oh. and it'll be a basic one. Well, but right. But I I'm, never dreamed as a freshman. Yeah, that they would have that opportunity. That almost doesn't even sound logical. But I don't know. But I know there's some basic college courses out there. Right. You know that, uh, depending upon what curriculum you go into, mm-hmm. you know a lot, and we have to also qualify this. And I know that this gets into a fine point, but if you're if you're going to be in the arts more of all arts and cultural Mm -hmm. things of that nature you probably don't need much math you know you don't need as much math basic math is good but if you're going into business i hate to tell you this you better have calculus right if you don't have calculus it doesn't count so it doesn't matter i had calculus in high school that didn't count toward my college credit so i had to turn around and go out and do it again right and i dropped it because i didn't need it because i at that time when i went when i went to school algebra and trig were the only thing you needed all right had that in college or high school too, but it didn't count toward college, so I had to take a college level examination, right? Test to test out. Yeah, right. And so I passed both. So I had was I was in the middle of my calculus class. The, it was a brand new book. None of the answers matched up. The teacher wasn't very good, and I said, you know what? I don't need to lose grade point average in my first semester because. Right of a bad teacher. So I don't need it anymore for my business degree. I've already got my algebra and trig. I already clapped out of it. So bingo. So I dropped the course. It was a four hour course. Well, then, you know, things happen. Um, As I was at St. Louis University, transferred over to Miami of Ohio and their requirements for business was calculus. Yeah. It was a five hour class. You had to take it every day and you're in there and here I am a fifth year senior with, First year freshman. <laughs> well, sometimes that's just how the cards play. But it was out, the third it? time I, you know, now it's right. the third time I've taken it. I didn't even hardly crack the book. I don't even know why I bought it. And you know, so I was taking a test and I was getting A's on the f- test for the most part. And then I just wanted to graduate, so I didn't really care too much. <laughs> so, but you know what I'm, I'm, you know, I'm saying is, is that now right. though, uh, by this. A uh, wonder called college uh, level uh, courses. Mm-hmm. They already get credit just by being in high school, right? So and there's really always helps out. there's always that. Um, you know, you just have to. You can't take for granted that it's going to go towards your degree. Like no, you said, depending no, on what degree say, yeah. or what school, what the um, your degree plan calls for, it may or may not end up being able sure. to actually help you, but. Yeah, those classes are still there. They are. Even for the freshmen, for these underclassmen. So That's good stuff. Yeah. But let's get back to what we're talking essay about. Contest. The essay contest. Yes. That's in February. So how is Intercounty going to get to all these schools that you have in this contest and let them know what this year's... First off, what is this year's theme? This year's topic, I really like it this year. It's another year where it's not a right or wrong answer. We've had those the last several years, and I really um, I really think we end up with better essays. Okay. But we're asking the students to write about how they would like to see their co-op, how they would like to see inter-county assist their community, our local communities. You know, concern for community is one of our seven co-op principles, and we want to know from these upcoming hmm. members how they think inner county should be helping in their communities and i'm really interested to read the essays and see what kind of ideas they have because they're going to have a totally different perspective than sure. what we do as employees or even what adult members have so um should be should, should be, be very interesting. interesting yeah right but like i said no right or wrong answer there's not a ton of research um, they're not having to have tons of mm-hmm. references and Crack the books and right. spend hours right. and hours and hours trying to gain some information. Right. We just want to know how they think we should be helping. And I'm interested to see what they have to say. That's a, that's a good topic. 
kind of like a public perception of Inner County. Right. And from not a just, student's eye. And not just public perception, but direction where they would like mm-hmm. to see us go. What are we not doing that they think we should be doing? Well, that's what I mean. It's yeah. Their perception. But they may not know there are things that you are doing for that community. That's cause true. A lot of what Inner County does, and a lot of what a lot of different companies like Inner County does, and co-ops and things of that nature, do a lot of things. And I'm not I'll say not under the table, but under the radar, right. because it's they don't publicize it, they don't do these things. I mean, look at all the different types of uh, Loans uh, group that Tony meetings helps you've with had. Things. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Tony does this with the business side, and you know, you guys do come out and you measure for generators and mm-hmm. things of that nature energy audits they i mean all those different things there's a lot of stuff engineering services i mean mm-hmm. there's a lot of different things that people just don't really know about inner county but at the same time might be something you know from the student side they don't know about it maybe inner county needs to let people know we do these things right yeah so even if they write that we need to be doing something like you said that maybe we already are doing that lets us know we need to spread the word. We need spread the word. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. So, essay topic: What do they think we should be doing? How should we be helping our local communities? Those top three essays from each school are going to be due to us by March first. Okay. Which, like you said, means that deadlines coming up in February. Each school will have their own deadline each that you need to will. submit it, though. Yeah. Right. And most schools, that contact person is either going to be the junior English teacher. Or the high school counselor. So if you've checked with one, and hopefully they're both aware, but one is probably going to be coordinating that over the other. Um, Check with one of them or both of them. And as far as how we are getting the message out to the schools, Mm -hmm. we're leaving that up to each individual school to let us know how they would like us to. And we know that some schools were not going to be able to come in and talk in the classrooms. Uh, some of them, we probably still will get to do that. There may be some that ask us to drop off brochures. Some of us that ask to record a audio or video message. We're just kind of letting them tell us how we can get that information to the students. Was this idea your idea? To check with the schools? No. Was this idea for your theme this year, was this your idea? Uh, well, it sounds a little boastful if I say that it was after I said that I really like this year's topic. Well, but was it? Yes. <laughs> yes, it was, actually. <laughs> well, I like the idea. No, I just, it just sounds like something that would come yeah. from you. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean that, that you're involved with more of the media people and right. you, would, you would have that kind of question. Yeah. How do you people, what do you think would be best for us to do to help your community? Yeah. Just mm-hmm. sounds like a normal question that you would ask. And those kids will tell us. Oh yeah, they have, usually <laughs> don't have any problem telling you. But the problem is you got to get the kids involved, and that's what yeah. the problem has been in the last few years it is has. that we just don't have enough kids getting involved. Now, here was a question somebody did ask me: Is they said, my child? We're not on Inner County. Can my child participate? And I said yes. Yes, absolutely. And that is a question we get asked a lot because other co-ops in the state. They do require the student to be a member or for their parents, the household that they live in, to be members of the co-op. Inner County does not require that. I'm glad I was right. <laughs> yeah, me, me too. It would, would have been really bad to have to tell the student, no, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. That guy is, I know what he's talking about. Right. But our board has kind of looked at it as, you know what, we serve these rural areas. We may not serve the cities. Salem is an example. St. James, Rolla. Um, Kabul, we've got some cities within our outermost territory, mm-hmm. you know, with in those school districts that they're not going to be on us. But those kids are still going to contribute to our local communities. They're, sure. They may be a member of ours when they grow up. They may be a member of a co-op, maybe in another state even, but they're still our future. Okay. And we want to make sure they have the opportunity to. Well, very good. So. Uh, Inner County will be somehow, some way, right? Uh, here in the next probably what week and a half, two weeks, mm-hmm. I would think. This month, yeah. Yeah, uh, getting the message out. Yes. It's an old Bee Gees. I got to get a message to yeah. you. So okay, <laughs> so we're gonna get the message out. Juniors only. Right. Two hundred fifty to five hundred word essay. That's all it is. Very short. Doesn't take much, and this is a total opinionated 
essay. Yes. There is no research that needs to be done whatsoever. Right. Now, if you want to do some research on it, you're more than welcome to do so to find out maybe what Inner County already does. Yeah. And you can always call us, have your student call us. Oh, I mean, that's a, that's a good, <laughs> um, it would be a good thing for these high school students to do anyway, because a lot of them, and not all of them, but a lot of them are not used to that actual physical conversation. They right. can do research online. Um, but to pick up the phone and call a business and get routed to the right person and be able to have a conversation, to ask those questions and record some answers, that's, sure. it'd be good for them. Right. So we don't know what the day, cutoff date is with the high school yet, so maybe we'll find that out. Uh, we'll get in touch with, I'll get in touch with them. Yeah, the counselor's we'll, office will we'll find out. We'll have to find out. But it's usually we'll the sure. end of February because mm -hmm. they need a little bit it's of usually time. usually a few days before, like 24th, yeah. 25th, yeah. so they can... They can collect them, get them, review them, great, you know, score them. Yes. And pick the top three. But we need at least three. Please. <laughs> but we want a whole bunch more. Guys, it, it's just all it is is an opinion. And I'll tell you this. I know that a lot of times there's that intimidation. What do you guys, you think you have like 200 kids in a class here in Salem? Is that, not or even. not that many? About 150. 150. So I think a lot of times when we present, and here in Salem, what we used to do is we would hold an assembly and present to all the students sure. at once. And when you tell them, you know, your competition is only amongst each other, it's just for you juniors, that's still intimidating to a lot of them because they're looking around, there's like, yeah, there's 150 of us. There's no way I'm going to make top three. That goes through a lot of their minds, and I'm sure some of them are just not interested at all. No, probably not. But I promise you... You write that essay, you have a much, much greater shot than one in 150 or three out of 150 because there are so few students that actually follow through and write the essay. Mm -hmm. The odds are really, really high that you'll make top three. Yep. And it's just opinionated. So it's not like you have to spend a lot of time from finding out about different things. Yes. It's already there. It's all in your head. You just you can make some calls. You can do some research, but it's not required. That's right. So, good idea. I, I like your idea though well, as thank well. Thank you. Okay. So anyway, so if you are the mother or father or grandmother or grandfather yeah. of a junior this year, in Rolla, St. James, Salem, Licking, Raymondville. No, well, Raymondville doesn't have a high school. Doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, if, I mean, it, if you're a parent uh, of a junior from Raymondville, then they would be attending be lick, a, Licking, licking right? or Houston. Right. Okay. Yeah. More than likely yeah. Licking, I think. Most of them go to Licking, don't they? Well, Licking doesn't have football, so that. Well, that's, they have their option, times, don't they? Yeah. Yeah, they have their option. All right. Well, anyway, Raymondville, because they're in the listening area. Yeah. You know, that's why I'm throwing all this out. And also, homeschool students. Let's yes. not forget them. They all qualify juniors only. Yes. So, again, uh, we'll be announcing those dates, and we'll have it out, and we'll have it in your world of the day, and we'll have the in uh, intercounty added in, in the year of the day, the dates that they have to have it submitted by. But we'll also have articles on it. So you don't forget. So please don't let the children forget. It only takes it won't what, take that long. 15 minutes at most. Yeah, they could probably. If that. 250 to 500 words is not a lot. I mean, they can meet that in one page. Oh, well, yeah. Easy. <laughs> but if you got a good idea, spread it out. I mean, it, it, it can be fairly short, but it could be a lot longer. And if you have a good idea and you have maybe, <clears throat> maybe your opinion, you have reason why you have that opinion. Share There's that. Always share that. Tell the story. You know, say, hey, we don't know anything about what you guys are doing in these communities because you don't let us know. And for now, then a, the emphasis falls back on Inner County. How do we how do we let you know? So you might answer that question. You maybe you need to do more social media. Maybe you need mm -hmm. to do uh, more of these interviews. Maybe you need to mm -hmm. do that in more of a time where the children can be a part of it. Yeah. I'm, I'm really interested to yeah. see what ideas they have. Okay, I think very we'll good. Have, if we can get them to write the essay, we can get them to write it. I think we'll have some good yeah. ideas. So again, it's a great year. Scholarships, more than likely what it's going to be. Yes. And the scholarships, $2,000 for first place, $500 for second and third. Right. Still not bad. Not bad at all. No. no for so. a page essay that's going to take you 15, 15 minutes. 15-minute submission. Hmm. 
It's a pretty good return on investment Can I write there. One? I know, right? I'm thinking I could write one of these. I've got. They didn't have that when I was in high school no, either. So. Me either. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so now essay test. It's coming up before you know it. You know, one of the things that we don't always talk about. It always seems to come up around the first of the year, or maybe in the spring might even be a little bit more apropos is the idea of net metering. And people say, well, what the heck are you talking about with net metering? Net metering is people who have solar power. Right. Or if they would have wind power, but I don't think you really do much wind power in our area. Yeah, it's not kind really of in a hole. practical here. Uh, yeah. Um, you can actually store that power and actually... Well, you can explain it better. We we net your usage, <laughs> yeah, essentially. There. You know, we call it net metering, distributed generation, lots of things that people can call. Use your own power when you have it, and if you fall short, it goes over to Intercounty. Right. Then you so, use theirs. And, and we have members that have, <clears throat> excuse me, we have members with very small solar systems. We have some with some very large-scale systems, but they are still on the grid, if you mm -hmm. will. Um, they're still connected to Intercounty's electrical distribution system right. we are their fallback or maybe in the cases of where members just have a very small system we are their primary use of power but um, essentially what happens is the member has a solar uh, system installed regardless of what size it is and we net their usage we um, keep track of what they generate what and what they use that they don't have to use from us, right. um, you know, they're not billed for any of that because that's their own power that they've generated. But if they're able to put any back on the grid, if you will, then we take that off of what their bill will be. So mm -hmm. um, I guess the easiest way to describe this is, is the member is essentially selling back the power they don't use. They sell it back to Intercounty. We purchase it from them at avoided cost, which is sort of like wholesale, what mm -hmm. we would pay for it if we were purchasing it from our own provider. Right. We buy that back from them at that cost. We put it back on the grid. Our members are able to use that. And then their meter, their bill amount is netted. This is how much you used, but you generated this much, and then we're paying you because you put this much back. So this is your bill total. Something I do want to point out is that service availability, so there's two parts to your bill. Right. You have your kilowatt hour usage, which is based on just that. Electric. What you use, your mm -hmm. consumption. And then we have service availability, which is your daily cost to have power available to you, whether Meter. you use any or not. Yeah. That's your flat rate costs, if right. you will. That cost, you're, you're always going to be billed that amount. So a lot of times what happens when people are researching these companies that come out and do solar installation, you know, they're really trying to make a sale and they're telling you, you can get rid of your electric bill, totally get rid of your electric bill. You will still well, you can if you drop everything, if you drop everything, <laughs> but you will still Not have thing to do. service availability because if you are still hooked up to intercounty system, we know that at any given moment, you may need to flip on a switch and use mm -hmm. power from the co-op as opposed to your own system. And it, there's a cost to sure. maintaining that, sure. you know, keeping the lines out to your home and, and the meter and transformers in good working order and right away cleared out to your location. So that flat rate cost, that service availability, you're always going to mm -hmm. have that. Or if you have a Generlink adapter for your right. generator, that's a, that's a monthly charge that doesn't change. Right. You know, it's just part of that, too. So yes. if you have that, just in case you do. You know, and, and somebody say, well, well, when would I ever have money to go back into the grid? Well, let's just say it's a bright, sunny day and you're on solar power and you have 50 panels. I mean, I'm not, most people won't have 50, right. but let's say you do. And if you have 50 panels, sunny day, and it's <clears throat> 60 degrees and you're not using any electricity. None. Right. I mean, you might, the only thing you might have is your phantom power on because you don't need an air conditioner on. You don't need a heater on. Maybe you're not inside watching TV mm -hmm. or anything of that nature. So you're not using anything. And it stays that way for five or six days. Boy, wouldn't that be crazy to right. have that kind of weather? But it does happen. Well, and when it does happen, you're not using electricity. Yeah. And a lot of the times, the sunniest part of the day when you're 
able to generate the most is afternoons. Mm -hmm. And if you're working during that time and you're not at home, then you're not running things like the washer and dryer right. and the stove and the oven and the door's not open and closed. All these things we've talked about before that consume a lot of electricity. If no one's home, then then you've not got all those appliances and things on. So there is, I mean, there is the potential to generate more than there what is. you're using and be able to put some back on the grid. Right. But all, everything has to be perfect for that. Now, let's say in the last few days when we've had nothing but great clouds and 30 degrees, um, and if you are heating your home by electricity, I guarantee you, you're not putting anything back on the grid. No, and you're actually <laughs> you're probably pulling it down from pulling the line. it off Inner yeah. County. So yeah. again, it, it's a, it's called net metering because it use it meters you, it builds you on the net right. of what you will generate and what Inner County has to provide when you can't generate. Right, and anything they generate that they can use, then that's, I mean, they're obviously not billed for that, mm -hmm. but they're consuming what they've generated. They're sort of their own little power plant right. at that time. And if you're interested in that, just call Inner County. Yes, because there is an application right. that we've got to have filled out, and, and we'll come out and inspect. We want to make sure that's all um, wired correctly and set up correctly and and um, kind of leads into me saying, please research your solar panel we'll provider. You know, with anything, you don't want to just go out and make a purchase. I mean, that's a large investment. A solar system is going to be... And there is still... I think there's still some energy credits that you can get. I think so. Federal, I haven't looked at that lately. But I, I haven't either. So I, I, I say that with tongue-in-cheek. I think there still is, but don't quote me on that. You need to contact your tax advisor on that to see because they've they stopped doing it, then they extended it, and I don't know. You know yeah. You know, but just research the vendors and ask for some references and take a look at some of the work they've done. And, you know, it's just like with anything. You would you would get a couple of bids before you installed a new heat pump in your home. You'd make sure it's a reliable vendor. So just do the same with your system if you're considering solar. All right, very good. Well, you mentioned a service availabil availability charge. <clears throat> There's going to be a change in rates in there. There is, yep. And oh, my well, gosh. Everybody's jumping already. What do no, you mean my rates are going to change? It was in the magazine. I know it was. Um, kind of hidden, if you will. It's in the director's report. I know. They I can tell Stan, in there. Stan's reading. We've got a big article coming in next month's magazine. But, yes, there is going to be a rate adjustment effective April 1st. It's very similar to what we did last year. And over the past probably, I don't know, four or five years maybe, our board has been looking at ways that they can make intercounty's rate structure more of a pass through of charges mm -hmm. and weather, just like we were talking about with the solar systems, um, weather plays a big factor in usage and in what your electric bill is and what the revenue is for intercounty. Right. And so what they're trying to do is get our rates set up in such a way that our service availability, that flat rate cost that we talked about earlier, that that actually takes care of all those flat rate costs. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then the kilowatt hour charge pays for the actual kilowatt hours that we have to purchase and, and push out for our members. And in the past, that's not the way things have been set up. And so bills fluctuate a lot based on weather and our revenues at the co-op mm -hmm. fluctuate a lot based on, you know, was it extremely cold or hot or was it very mellow winter, um, very mild summer. And this rate adjustment that's coming in April is just reflective of, of that consistent, hey, we're going to, we got to get this changed so that it's reflective of what the charges actually are. It's a huge increase of five cents a day. On service availability. On service availability, but a decrease yes. in your kilowatt hour consumption. Yes. And so the average, and I don't have the numbers right in front of me, but we took the average member's bill and we figured it, calculated it at the current rate, and then we calculated it at the rate that's going to come on April 1st, and there was a two cent difference. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't be much. No. The increase on your total monthly bill was two cents for the average member. You know, you're even if you use zero kilowatt hours, and so you were not benefiting from that kilowatt hour decrease. Right. 
if you were just paying the extra for the service availability right. increase, it'd be a dollar fifty a month. Right. Except but, for February. Well, yeah. You save there's, money. <laughs> there's not thirty days. <laughs> it'd be even cheaper, wouldn't it? It'd be dollar forty. Yeah, but um, look at the savings. That's big, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, we do what we can. <laughs> <laughs> you know. A lot of times when you think rate adjustment, a lot of times people think rate increase, mm -hmm. and that's not what this is intended to be. Um, it really is just an adjustment of how we're billing. and Taking it from a variable cost to a fixed cost. Right. And depending on what your usage is, if you use fewer kilowatt hours, then you are going to see more of just the increase in the service availability, and you're not going to sure. benefit as much from the consumption. But if you're someone that uses average or above average kilowatt hours, you're going to save money. You're going to save money. Your bill will go down mm -hmm. because you're going to be charged less right. for your kilowatt hours. And that's what made up the bulk of your bill anyway. So. Now, it's not substantial. Well, I mean, it's we're not, not. You know, it's, we're talking about a dollar fifty a month. So if it's a two cent difference, obviously it's a dollar fifty on the average bill. Okay? Yes. Two fifty, a dollar fifty this way, dollar fifty that way. So. Dollar forty-eight this way, dollar fifty that way. Yeah. Okay, so the two cent difference. All right, so if you use the average amount, and let's hypothetically say that was a thousand kilowatt hours a month. Well, if you use fifteen hundred, your bill is going to be higher, but your your cost per kilowatt hour has decreased. So if you would look at it that way, that's what, that's what Heather's trying to say. That cost. Right. Would be would be lower than if it was and their, the old fashioned. Their way. actual bill will be less if yeah. they are using fifteen hundred kilowatt hours. Last year to this to this year, year will be less. It will be less. Their yeah. bill will be less. So that's what I'm, I'm trying to get yeah. across: is the kilowatt hour portion, the variable part of your bill, mm -hmm. will be less as long as you exceed the dollar fifty, or dollar forty in February, right? Or dollar fifty five in March, and in July. And in August, and in December, and October. Look at you. Yeah. It's it's designed to be revenue neutral for the co-op. We're not trying to make any extra money. We're not trying to... You sound like a government agent. It, I revenue know. A little, neutral. Revenue neutral. But it Did really you hear is. That term? Revenue. That well, sounds I, like super fancy, doesn't it? That's, that, sound, that sounds like our government. Yeah. Yeah, we want everything to be revenue neutral. This really is, though. Well, no, 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 I know, but... but doesn't that sound like a government it term? Does. We want your income to be revenue neutral, so you don't make any money, but you don't make any less. You're making us sound bad. <laughs> no, 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 no. This is <clears throat> what Intercounty is actually doing will benefit most customers, unless you use very little electricity. Now, if you have a pump house that uses very little electricity, that dollar fifty is going to you're going to see it more. Right. Now, but if you have two electric furnaces in your yeah. house. And you have, let's just say you have a 4,000 square foot house. Oh, my. You're not even going to notice this dollar fifty. No. Your bill is actually going to go down. Your bill will be lower. Yeah. So that's what I'm trying to get across. Right. So, anyway. Yeah, but you were sneaky. You put in a director's report. Sneaky, sneaky. No, you, you sneaky. read the whole thing. Yeah. Everybody should read everything that comes into the my co-op mm -hmm. section of, of the Rural Magazine. By the way, it's, yeah. it's really pretty thorough the articles that they have there we talked about net metering that's all i mm -hmm. believe that's also in there is. is it this month or was right. last month yeah all right so this month. net had... metering is in and they go through and they explain it mm -hmm. pretty clear and there's a good example in there you know we were trying to talk about how your bill is affected mm -hmm. if you have a solar unit at home there's a really great example of if this, then this is how your bill's affected. If you don't put anything back on the grid, then this is what your bill would be. So if you have not looked at the January Rural Missouri, hopefully you still have that. But if you don't, just know that you can always go online to our website and view that. Um, well, it'll take you to the most recent edition of the Rural Missouri, mm -hmm. but you can go back and view previous copies as well. But Look at that example and just read through there, and I think it's going to make it really easy to kind of understand and and know how your bill's affected right. affected if you want to install solar at your home. And if you do go online, when you go click on the Rural Missouri, the first thing you see is the co-op part of the magazine. The local pages, yeah. yep. So it makes it very easy to go through those four pages 
mm -hmm. it flips just like a page, which is pretty cool. Right. And you can zoom in. You can zoom in. You can actually blow yeah. it up. And yeah. If you got a big monitor, you can make it really big. Yeah. And so you can read the whole thing. But uh, it really, uh, I, I wanted to give credit for, you know, where credit's due. It, those pages in there, they kind of ask the questions you would ask. Like, if I'm doing that meeting, well, how does this affect me? Or, you know, and they will, and it, it answers those questions right there. So it's a, they do a good job of putting those articles together to try and answer 99% of what people's curiosities would be or right. questions might be. Right. Now, they can't go and, and do a bid for you with a contractor yeah. like Heather was doing. They're not going to tell you who to use. They're not going right. to tell you to go do this. They're just saying if you want to look into this, you can, and they will answer any questions you can at that time like net metering is just something that if you don't have any desire to have solar power on your on your home or have those panels everywhere on your roof or ceiling and wherever else you might want to put them heck i don't know i've seen people put them in a feet well out there on 44 they got them in a field i was gonna say there's a like field. five acres of them i thought okay well powers loves trucking yeah but five acres of ground now is useless. You can't do anything with it. It is now solar covered right. with panels. So they can't grow anything. It's like uh, a generation plant. It, 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 it's kind of, you know, and that's just for one plant. And mm -hmm. that's a lot of panels. Now, I grant you, there's a lot of people that go through it and a lot of truckers that use it. Right. But, um, you know, what I'm saying is when you can't have four or five panels and worry about net metering. It won't be advantageous. Yeah. Okay. It may help you a little bit with um, if you have a maybe a garage with a couple of lights. <laughs> but you know they had the little solar panels that they they show now with the LEDs. It goes a lot farther. Your it does. battery does. It does. In the old days with the incandescents, it didn't take much at all. Well, and the solar units that we're seeing installed, technology is getting better. It is. Just like better batteries. The lithium. The batteries, batteries are better. Um, you know, and as the longer this is around the costs for that technology is coming down. So I think we'll see more and more installed just because they may become more affordable and more practical, you know, with the with the better technology. But if you're building a new house, it probably wouldn't be a bad idea to look at that. Because you already be got the time. I mean, you, it, the the timing there is perfect. If you're already putting it on, so you may want to put a different type of roof on than the one you have, more right. secure roof. Uh, you know, there are pan those panels aren't light. No, they're heavy. And when you put them on your roof, there's a weight there. You know, I, I will say that uh, you do need to, you know, if you're going to put them on an older home, you may want to make sure that your subroof is in better shape or your trusses are in good shape underneath. And that's something a good vendor is going to check out. Well, that's exactly right. So, right. so Heather's bringing it out of that. But anyway, go read the Rural Bank, Missouri. You'll yes. find a lot of those things that we're talking about in there. Now, when it comes to your own contractor and things of that nature in your house and your trusses mm -hmm. and your wood, that's going to be up to them, you know, to right. let you know if that's good. And make sure you always get a warranty. Make sure you always get a warranty Ooh. when you do that, you know, good because advice. at least two years, if not longer, because if something goes wrong, you do not want to be up on that roof trying to fix it. I can guarantee you. No. <laughs> not a good thing. <laughs> Okay, we had last month, last year, if you want to go that mm. far back, um, Heather talked about capital credits. Yes. There was a There's always fairly a large contingent of names yeah. um, that they can't find. Right, and every year we have a very Large long contingent list. of, yes. of I mean, might just call it members, you know, members of the right. Capital they, Credit Club, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want to be a part of that no, unclaimed that's not club, a one, That's not one you want to join. No, but, you know, and, and I think we say this a lot, or I feel like we say this a lot, but please just let us know when your address changes. Even if maybe you were a member, well, in this case, 2001, we have capital credit checks going out to members that earned a portion of margins in 2001. Yeah. If you've moved since then and you're listening, please just call the office and let us know what your current address is. Those capital credits are still owed to you. Those are yours, even if you're no longer a member. And we want to be able to get them to you. We just need to know where to send them. You can't get them to them if you don't know where they are. I know. So, And uh, we already mm -hmm. talked about if that member name on the account has deceased, uh, 
the survivors, the trust, the estate, whatever it's in, can contact Intercounty and you can get those sent to you. You can. They could be divvied up to the survivors as you wish. Right. Or more than likely, uh, just have it sent to one person, let them divvy it up. Me. Right. And I we mean, have, but they will do it. Yeah. We have both situations. We mm-hmm. have plenty of times where there's several surviving family members and they ask for it to be split up multiple ways. And there are instances where it goes to one family member and what they do with that after that, you know, is up to the family. Right. But, but the uh, address is key here. It is. So please, if um, if you do know of anybody or you, or you go look on that, um, if you have a few minutes and maybe you're bored, or you're tired <laughs> of watching the same junk on TV, uh, go look at the Capitol Credits and see if you might recognize a few of those names. And then... If you know that they've moved and maybe they don't, maybe they're not in your county anymore. Maybe they moved out of the area, mm-hmm. but you stay in contact with them. Please let them know. Right. You know, it's uh, one of those things that a little bit of extra money in your pocket sure doesn't hurt. You well, know, especially yeah. when it's already yours. I was just say it's to, already yours. <laughs> to begin with. Well, I mean, it's, there's a lot of things you donate and that's uh if you don't claim it, it's going to get donated. Right. Uh, it gets but, put back in the, in the you, pool for well, that. You got two room. years. Two years to Two claim years. them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So please, we want all the money to go back to the original owners if it's possible. So please get it to them. You know, that's that's the key. But I'm telling you what, that, that club seems to be growing. There's a lot. Yeah. Seems to be growing. <clears throat> now, uh, so please, please uh, contact Inner County. And you can do that a number of different ways. Number one, you can email them. Right. You can send us a, well, you're not going to have Smart Hub if you're not a current member. I was going to say, you could send us a message well, through no, Smart Hub. you can email you. They can email us. They can call us. Calling us is the easiest way. It sure is. Um, just pick up the phone. Give us a call. Let us know what your new address is. Right. We're going to pull or up your old account. Send a change of address card. You can send the card. You can stop by one of our offices. Mm-hmm. You know, that may not be practical, especially if you've moved out of state, obviously. But picking up the phone and calling us is the easiest way is there a number that 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 they can do that with what there is actually imagine and do you know what that number might be a little bit okay you've used it once once or twice yes so give us a call the toll-free number is 866-621-3679 and you'll be connected with someone in our member accounts department Mm -hmm. and they can take care of that you don't even have to be transferred wow answer the phone get your address send you some checks if you know your old account number that helps yeah they can look it up by <laughs> I know, but maybe if you know it it just speeds things up it would speed things up but the the likelihood of someone remembering that it's really slim we're not going to require you to know your old account <laughs> number so don't let that stop you no, from calling but, but you but might need to know the address where it was located the address we can look it up by yeah. your social security number if that was on your account right. um, a lot so. of times that's the easiest way because that's the number they're going to remember and well, you hope. Yeah, we hope. You know, most people don't really know their social <laughs> oh, security number. Don't tell me that, Stan. Yeah. Well, they really don't know off the top of their head. I mean, they have it usually carried in their pocket or something. That's not good. No. You're not supposed to carry that. I know. It used to be you were supposed <clears throat> to carry it wherever you went years ago. It's supposed to be on you. Not anymore. Not anymore. Scammers. No, I know. I know. But not anymore. Yeah. Times have changed. Remember, it used to be on checks. You used to have social security number? number on checks. I didn't know that. On the top of the checks under the name. People oh used to my. put their social security. <laughs> no, I didn't know oh, that. Oh, yeah. For never... years they did that. Huh. Yeah. Well, according to the government, it was not supposed to be used for anything except for social security. Then people started using it for IDs. Oh. Which, that was never its intention. So, anyhow. Yeah. But <clears> be that as it may, call Inner County. Let them know. You can do it by address. If you have your account number maybe you were going through and throwing out some old bills and you, you came across one and said ah eureka you took it they with you when you money. moved <laughs> they owe me money um go ahead and give me your account number but if you have your address or social security number some way they can identify right. you they will, we'll they find will you. definitely then have a check sent to you and you'll be a happy camper yeah and get you're... off of that club list right we we don't want to have to use so many pages yeah well, in such small print. Well, one thing you didn't have a lot of pages uh, was was Operation Roundup here a couple months back. Huh. You have one application? I know. In November? One? I've one. never heard of such a thing. Now, I know with COVID and a lot of things, people are thinking, oh, 
you know, I, maybe I don't want to submit it or I, I who knows I, what people are thinking. Well, and we've talked about this the last couple months, and it's really surprised me because the numbers are down. Mm-hmm. Not numbers of members that are participating. We have no, 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 more no, and no, more no. members that are rounding their bill up. They're contributing to the foundation. They want to be able to help. We're having fewer and fewer people ask for assistance. So please, if you found yourself sort of, you know, in a pickle, let us know so that we can get an application to you. There's no shame in asking for help. Um, you you can't know. tell when somebody's car is going to break down. No. They need new tires. The medicines all have shot up in price. Um, maybe their new insurance doesn't cover their medication like it used to. Right. Wow. And, and that can be a slap in the face when you go to the pharmacy and it used to cost you $8 and they say 305 Oh, yeah. That, yeah. Ooh. Uh, Sticker shock. What? And especially with COVID right now, I think I, I just expected there would be an increase just because there's more people out of a job, whether it's, you know, because of the company that they work for has got limited hours or mm-hmm. um, smaller crew that's that's working or illnesses. Um, you know, I had R- Rolla radio yesterday was talking to Lee Burr. I know you probably know Lee. Mm-hmm. Um, he was out for weeks and weeks and weeks because of an illness. And, you know, we were talking yesterday about how that pr- can present a huge need. Yes. And you may have been doing just fine before then, but if you're out of work for 50 or 60 days, you can have some bills start to pile up that you just need a little bit of help with. Does not mean that you um, were not doing well before and that you won't be doing just fine afterwards. But Intercounty's Roundup program, that's really what it's designed for. It's not a monthly program you get on and, uh, you know, they pay a portion yeah, of no, the no, bill no. every month. This is a one-time assistance, help you over that hump, um, get you back on your feet type of program. And We just need to know when there's a need so that we can help fill that. So if that's you, then please let us know. But if that's someone you know, if you know of someone that's been out of work or maybe been sick or maybe, you know, like you mentioned, they've had their car break down and now the furnace went out and Mm -hmm. you don't ever know. And with this new insurance, and with the insurance had to be renewed every (laughs) year, it changes. It does. And you don't even know it. If you just keep renewing the policy, you know, I'm on Anthem. They... I had one policy last year. Of course, every year they change it. And then they, you know, they say, oh, you don't have to do anything. We'll automatically renew you. Well, cost went up 300 some odd dollars a month and the coverage went down. Now, how did coverage go down and the costs go up? I mean, substantially. <laughs> and so, you know, I thought, well, no, I'll, you know, and I hate going on the healthcare marketplace, but I did. And they offered a plan almost identical to one I had cheaper than what you and had more pay. coverage oh, wow. and had less deductible well that's still cheaper it's kind of a no-brainer yeah but if you don't go look right. you don't know so in many cases a lot of people don't have time to go in the healthcare marketplace and i don't really have time to do it either but sure as heck wasn't going to pay him an extra thirty six hundred dollars and have less coverage that just wasn't going to happen yeah. over what i was paying the previous year and something there's no way so I went on there and found, found a program. Now, if you couldn't do that or didn't do that, all of a sudden you may find out that medication that you've been taking, which might have been a Category 1, has now been moved to Category 2, and they don't cover that in Category 2. All right. of a sudden, what used to cost you $12, $15 may now cost you 85 to $90. Right. May not be you have 85 or $90 that... You mm-hmm. wanna you have an opportunity to give to the pharmacist because the insurance company changed. Right. You didn't do anything different. Your doctor didn't change your medication. Nothing changed except the cost. we're no longer gonna cover that. Right. At full cost or this cost. So Yeah. So either let us know if if you could use a little bit of help or either go ahead and give us a call and let us get an application to you so that you can take to your friend or family member mm-hmm. that you might know that's in a situation where they could use some help or encourage them to contact us and we can get an application in and we do review those every month. It's always the same day as the program here, the second Tuesday, but today we'll go over all the applications that we received through the month of December right. and next month we'll review the applications For that we received January. this month. So, 
get your application in, encourage your loved ones to turn in an application. There are over 15,000 members participating because they want to be able to do good. They want to be able to assist their neighbors in their local communities. Yeah. So it's a great program. Mm. Please, but only use it when you need it. Please, because there's a lot of people out there. And I mean, the the one claim in November, that's just totally absurd. Right. I've never seen it like that before. And we do have, if you're participating or maybe if you're thinking about participating in the program, um, we have seven volunteer delegates that represent intercounty service territory. They review those applications every month. And let me tell you, they are good stewards of that money. Mm -hmm. They participate in the program as well. They want to see those funds go to individuals, to families that have an actual legitimate need. So um, if you're listening today and you don't really have a need, but you think it might be a way to get a little bit extra money, mm -hmm. they yeah, will no, know no. that that's what you're trying to do and that's not going to fly. And if you participate and you're thinking, oh, they're just telling everybody to apply, what if they don't really need it? I promise you, those delegates are being very good stewards of that money, and they're making sure that it is being spent wisely right. and and being presented to individuals that, like I said, have a legitimate need. Right, and we all know first of the year it's tough. You know, bills come in for Christmas gifts, mm -hmm. personal property tax, real estate tax, getting ready for taxes. It's cold. You know, we talk cold, about high bills. You know, so, you've got probably higher electric bills or propane. Right, or right. I mean, even if you're wood heat. No, you you still cannot have to, use the money to pay your electric bill. You cannot. No. Um, that's just a transparency thing. We mm -hmm. want to make sure that if you're participating in the program, you know you're doing good in the community. Right. You're not just rounding your bill up so Intercounty can make sure our debt is paid. Yeah. So but, anyway, but it's a it's a great program. It is. If you have any questions, just call Inner County. Heather already gave you a number. We'll repeat it again here in just a couple of minutes. But uh, it's a it's a fantastic program that we we talk about virtually every program. But it is a, it's a key program for those who might need that little helping hand. Please use it wisely. Mm -hmm. And like I said, it's a. Uh, it, it can be a godsend to you if you absolutely have nowhere else to turn uh, or you think that there's just nobody else out there to help. Uh, because, you know, a lot of times at this time of year, funds are not available in, right. in a lot of different areas. And so uh, not yet. Usually they, if the first of the year doesn't mm -hmm. happen, it may take a month or two, and then, then their cycle comes in to where they can actually start helping people again. But that might be March. And you may be way behind at that You're point. way behind in March. So you don't want to do that. Yeah. So please, uh, but contact Intercounty. Talk yes. to them about your situation, and they'll be more than happy to answer any questions you have. Um, well, you, we already mentioned in a... In a previous engagement a little bit about smart hub smart hub just is a great way to keep track of everything and it's a really good way to communicate with inner county in a number of different ways but i, I want to remind people if you're not on smart hub let me just tell you i know i joined smart hub here a few months ago. back no not a long time ago oh really nope that never she really well i didn't have a need for it i mean i so it, uh, it's out the tower, and I know what my bill is going to be. And as long right. as everything was about it, never changes. You know, it's right. pretty much the same. But I remember a year ago, I had not a year ago. Let me let me correct that. About five years ago, I had a portable heater. We do not have a you know heating system out uh -huh. there, and it uh, kind of shorted out. Oh, I remember this. And the electric bill was very high mm -hmm. and i thought you know i don't want to have that happen again now see the, the portable heater you have out there is very dusty it's a, it's a just a you know it's a concrete block building right and I'll, so a lot of dust collaborates inside there and so you know it's it does get dirty and things of that nature well i have an old radiator heater out there that, that provides a little bit of ambient heat in there uh -huh. but it's probably eight Nine years old now. Okay. Been used. It came from another place. And you just don't know when that decides it wants to quit. Which could cause some problems. Which can cause a lot of problems. That, or, you know, we all talk We talk about portable heaters, and, and we, we mm -hmm. probably need to touch on that just before we go. But space heaters and portable heaters and radiator heaters and mm -hmm. Eden Pures and all these different types of heaters, 
whatever amount of watts it says it's using is what it's using. Right. So you may have adjustable settings to where maybe 200 watts or 300 kilowatts or 500 kilowatts an hour or mm-hmm. whatever it might be, or 1,000 or 1,500 or 2,500. Um, sometimes on those radiator heaters, they have little switches right. where you can take it 6 or 9 or 1,500. Well, you don't really need 1,500 out there, but you might have hit both switches. Yeah. <laughs> and it's nice and toasty in there to where critters want to come in because it's nice and toasty in there. Yeah. Um, you don't need that. And then you look at the bill, and all of a sudden it's about $75 more than what it should be. Which is not an exaggeration. That's not an exaggeration. Yeah. And that's for a little 6 by 10 building, okay? Mm-hmm. That's not very big. $75 on top of what? my bill would normally be so guys smart hub can tell you when all of a sudden that starts to climb and you can see and it was that i had to do because you told me you know that you guys we can do this and so i thought okay i'm gonna go play with this and just see what i can see Uh and you can actually go on there and see what's happening at that very moment with your electric it's pretty cool to do that if you have not used smart hub do it Right. You can see what your previous day was. You can see what your previous week was. You can see what your previous year was. You can go back and see what your bill was then and what your bill is going to be now. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of different things that you can do at Smart Hub. So just as a little mini ad from somebody who just went on and did it, do it. Just If you're not on Smart Hub, get on Smart Hub. It's easy to use. And it really is. And there's, I haven't even started to scratch the surface of all the things you can use it for. Yeah. And it's great. We've heard from a few members. You know, we talk about scams every now and then, and they're just, they're here to stay. These scammers are not just going to s- stop. Mm-hmm. Um, they're going to get more creative. But typically, their uh, general approach is to frighten someone into paying their bill right away in fear that they're going to be turned off. Right. And most of the time, what they claim is that you didn't pay your bill last month and we're coming to turn you off. We've had several members tell us that they've really been grateful to have Smart Hub app on their phone because they don't even have to hang up. Um, They can just open their Smart Hub app because there are times, and this is what they're banking on, is Mm -hmm. that you will think, well, did Did I I send send that in? Maybe I didn't pay it. They're able to pull up Smart Hub, look at last month's bill. Look at their paid. balance, <laughs> and then they can say, "No, I did pay my bill." Yeah, and they know right away. This is—I mean, they probably knew before. Yeah. And That's I'm why recording they're getting this on call, it. and you're yeah. going to be convicted. That's what should happen. <laughs> Just tell them that. Yeah. Well, they know better. They know they. Now, well, remember, in Missouri, only one party needs to know what's being recorded. That is legal. And that's going to be you. And if you're recording it, <laughs> you're good. Yeah. And as long as you know it, a third party can't do it without another people's knowledge. That's why whenever you do the insurance company, I have to tell you that this is being recorded. Right. Yeah. So but anyhow, very good. Uh, good but tool. let's go now. Let's take off that smart hub example that I just had and talk real quickly about space, space heaters. heaters. And it again, I don't care what kind of space heater you have and what they tell you. Mm-hmm. And neither does Heather. No. We've talked about <laughs> this before. Those people are not always very honest. Well, and sometimes they are honest. It's just misleading. And probably my favorite um, marketing claim is that some of these heaters, they cost you pennies a day to operate. That's that's not wrong. They just don't tell you how many pennies, and it's going to be a lot of pennies. Um, but well, you know, like I mean, if you have one of those variables that goes down, maybe you can set it 50 kilowatts. It may not be much if it doesn't come on very often. Right. And a lot of that's going to depend on what size heater you have or what mm-hmm. setting it's on, how often you're running it. But, you know, you mentioned that it doesn't matter what size it is. Uh, you know, a watt is a watt. If it's a 1,500-watt heater, it doesn't matter if you gave 20 bucks for that heater or 200 bucks. It's still 1,500 One watts. may be safer to mm-hmm. operate. One may be prettier. One may look nicer in your home. But they are still going to consume the same amount. Those are heating elements that are inside that heater. And if it's a 1,500-watt heater, it's a 1,500-watt heater. And that's what it's going to be pulling when it's on. And that's what you're going to be billed for at the end of the month. Or daily if you're on prepay or whatever Mm -hmm. 
that might be. So be cautious of those. And the older they get, the less e- efficient they are. Mm-hmm. You know, and I hate to tell people that because, as I just mentioned, I've got an old, I say eight years old, but it, it's out in the outdoors all the time. Basically, that's an, you can almost consider that being outdoors. It's undercover, but it's in a very uncontrolled environment. You right. know, so it has its ups and downs with weather all the time. It's not in an air. It's not in a air controlled area. Okay, right. so how long will it last? And it doesn't matter. I know I have to have one, so it doesn't matter what kind I have out there. I've had ceramic heaters out there. I've had the, gosh, I remember years ago, and you used to have the old wire ones, mm-hmm. the wire mesh. The, that was scary. Lit up. And, yeah, and the thing was mm-hmm. orange. You mm-hmm. walk in there, thing was boom. Yeah. You hear it come on, and you know, how much electric is that using? You know, yeah. and you just have to have them in some areas of your house. You may have to have it. You just don't have. Um, some of the old houses when they were built did not put the air con- air conditioning and heating ducts in the right places. Right, they or just maybe, didn't yeah. do it. Yeah, so there's no there's no air movement there. Uh, kitchens are notorious for that. Bathrooms are also very notorious for that. They usually put in one. Well, if you have a fairly large kitchen, one isn't going to do it. Yeah, you know, especially if you stand in there and a flo- maybe on a tile floor and it's cold. I mean, people want to put. Uh, heating, you know, portable heater in there mm-hmm. when they're working in the winter. That's okay. Turn it off. When you're done, turn it off. Yes. Now, if you do that in short little spurts, you're probably not going to notice it as bad. Right. And what we usually try to remind everyone is that these space heaters, and your situation you described is a little unique, but in a home, those should not be a permanent um, solution no. to your heating there are times when it's going to make sense or when it's needed, but like you said, turn it on, use it for its intended purpose, and then turn it back off. Right. And you're only going to need it for three months or four months. Right. More than likely. Shouldn't need it much more than that. But do not, and don't get five or six of them and put one in each room. Ooh. Ooh, is a yeah. <laughs> Look, <laughs> that's a high had a cringe. I'm like, ooh. <laughs> ooh. Yeah. So, again, just a little common sense here, guys. Please don't do that. Um, you know, you're better off talking to a, a furnace company to ask them what is it going to take to to run new ductwork in. It, it, it may may be a thousand dollars here or there, but if you're going to continue to use portable space heaters, heating sources, and you know, because a lot of people will use propane, but that's not a good idea inside a house. No. All right, like really a bad one. Uh, <laughs> so don't don't do it. Um, but we do talk about little things like well houses and with some well houses now, they're using the smaller mm-hmm. little heating elements like that. So, uh, cause the bulbs don't generate power, any, the heat anymore. You used to have a hundred watt bulb, put it down there. That Kept it warm sucker enough. would get it freeze. nice and warm. Yeah. Now you put a hundred watt LED bulb down there. You don't know anything. No, there's no heat at all. No. So they've gotten these little smaller portable heaters and then they're selling those and they're selling them for, they're not much money, maybe fifty dollars or whatever it is, but you're gonna have that on twenty four seven. Yeah. And if it's fifteen hundred watts, it's gonna be a high cost. Yeah. Every single day. <laughs> and with you know, we talked about back during the holiday time, call us and let us help you work through the math of what <clears throat> lights and lights mm-hmm. and, and the same with a space heater. If you're thinking of purchasing one, maybe you already have one, and you're just curious, how much is this adding to my bill? Give us a call. We'll have you pull some numbers off the back or the bottom of the of the heater, and, and we'll show you how to calculate it. There you go. <clears throat> now, isn't that nice of Intercounty? That's another service that we don't always talk it about. It is. Help one you of those calculate your usage. Juniors about that. You can calculate usage of your space heater. Yeah. Ain't that good information good. to have before you start plugging it in well, and using it. Well, it is. It's, it's excellent information to have. Yeah. And if you have any questions like that, please contact your friends in Inner County. I don't have anything else. You have anything else? Nope. But we covered everything? We did. Son. I wanted to touch on space heaters, and you just uh, went right there. Well, so. I kind of led into it with my example. Yeah. <laughs> it's just that time of year. It something is. Something we got to talk about. So. And, and please, if you have an old space heater... Like it's once I was talking about with the mesh that you can see the yellow or you can see the, the lines orange, in there yeah. and you see that, please get rid of those. They are very dangerous. And, you know, um, and, and I don't mean just dangerous in the form of being hot. If dust gets in there, you can watch them spark. 
And that's all open for dust to yeah. get in there. And so please, yeah, there's no filters on those. It's it's very dangerous. I, just for safety's sake. And right. I, I know nobody wants to get rid of something that works. And those were built years ago to work forever. However, that might be something you may not want forever because fire is something that right. you just don't want to have created from a... a a little bit of, you know, you might have a, a you know, we'll all call it a dust bunny jump up in there and, and they move across the floor. It's amazing how they can run. Mm -hmm. But as you walk and it follows you and it jumps in there, and all of a sudden it catches on fire, jump, jumps out of the, you know, space heater onto a rug. And the next thing you know, you've got an issue. So yeah. please get rid of those open. Um, <clears throat> I don't even, they don't even have much of anything in front. They're just no, wide open. No, it's just a, just a wire yeah, yeah it's just know. wire and metal it, and it glows <laughs> and it gets hot too it gets real hot so yeah again uh just just dump those there are better ones today but again no matter what it says the amount of, of the usage you have on the on each space heater that's what you're going to be using and you still want to operate them safely make sure safely. you're not leaving them on while you leave the home exactly. or while you're sleeping you want to make sure you keep space around them don't have clothes and papers and curtains yeah, and don't stuff. cover them up piled up around them yeah very good it's a heating element it is yeah exactly that heather as always a pleasure that you came yeah, by and spent you. some time with us and heather's got her all electric car out there and so as long as you didn't leave the radio on but it doesn't work it you, doesn't work you know. <laughs> can't run down the battery right nope. <laughs> <laughs> well just an interesting thought yeah but um, but anyhow um, but that is interesting is in inner county you had mentioned i think a couple meetings back how inner county is going to be doing more of these electric cars and things of right. that nature. so right this is the first one we've got in the fleet and kind of employees getting used to it and you had the privilege of driving it. i've been getting to drive it to the radio programs i know I feel a little special well, well you should I just hope you don't either have... that or I'm the guinea pig and they just haven't told me. <laughs> well, like... they tell you to charge it when you're over in Salem. You're going to have a problem. Yeah, I know. You know right. They really have any <laughs> charging stations here. Not yet. I'm sure they'll be here before, yeah. sooner or later. But anyway, yeah. but again, thank you for coming yeah, by and spending some time with us. And we hope all of you enjoyed Heather right here at KSMO Radio. And our Inner County Tuesday is the second Tuesday of every month where they come in and we discuss different things that hopefully are topical for that time of year and mm -hmm. that you might not know about. And please, if you are a parent, grandparent, uncle, aunt of a junior, please get them involved in an essay contest this year, please. Yes. Uh, it's, it'll be well worth their time for the 15, maybe 18, 20 minutes it will take them to write that 250 to 500 word essay. And what's the topic again, since you uh, came up with it? And we're asking them to write about how their co-op can help their community. There you go. It's simple. Easy. Easy. Very easy. Thanks again.